The reform actions I saw in California and Washington state were impressive. But after all, those are blue states, progressive states, where you expect reform to be popular. What about a solid red state like South Dakota? Where conservative Republicans have an iron grip on power. Even here, grassroots voters are in a rebellious mood. The tradition of populist rebellion dates back to 1898, when South Dakota became the first in the nation to give citizens the power to overrule politicians through popular ballot initiatives. You know, you just go in, all the candidates will be listed on a single ballot. And so here in Sioux Falls, reformers take their fight directly to the voters. You know, it, it takes control away from the parties, gives it back to the voters. So I'm running for the Senate, but I ain't a big wheel. In 2014, Rick Weiland ran for the U.S. Senate as a Democrat, campaigning on getting money out of politics. Weiland lost, but a ballot measure to raise the minimum wage won a solid majority. Ballot measures are about opening up our democracy and letting people have a voice again, getting people to, uh, to believe that it matters again. I'm Weiland teamed up with his friend Dre Samuelson to form TakeItBack.org, a citizens movement to take on South Dakota's power brokers. After 28 years in Washington as a Democratic Capitol Hill staffer, Samuelson had given up on DC and come back home to push for reforms. So why do it here in South Dakota? Why not just fix the system in Washington? It's not possible to change the system in Washington. There's too much uh, there's too much anger, there's too much hyper-partisanship, there's too much suspicion of the other side. So you're saying the initiative for political reform in America has moved from the nation's capital to the state? That's it. People are turning to ballot initiatives simply because they have no other place to turn. Samuelson and Weiland stitched together an unlikely coalition of South Dakotans across the political spectrum including Sioux Falls former Republican Mayor Rick Noby, now an independent. We don't suffer from gridlock, we suffer from one-party domination. With only 47% of the registered voters, Republicans hold every major state office and 85% of legislative seats. The folks are angry, and justifiably so. With help from national reform groups, Weiland and Samuelson collected more than 20,000 signatures to put an anti-corruption measure, I am 22, on the 2016 ballot. The sweeping reform called for limiting campaign contributions, greater exposure of funders, and giving every registered voter $100 in vouchers to donate to state candidates of their choice. As expected, the state's Republican powers Governor Dennis Dugard and U.S. Senators John Thune and Mike Rounds came out against IM-22. But the heavy opposition artillery came from the powerful political network funded by conservative billionaire activists Charles and David Koch and their flagship group, Americans for Prosperity. The Koch brothers aren't coming in uh, to South Dakota for any reason other than they see this as a very significant fight and they want to be sure that they stop, nip this in the bud before it spreads. South Dakota is divided uh, almost in the middle by the Missouri River. And I found Ben Lee heading the Koch operation in South Dakota and leading a wealthy coalition that ran waves of radio ads and statewide mailers attacking Measure 22. Publicly funded campaigns is a nice way of saying taxpayer funded elections. At a civic debate in Sioux Falls, Lee spoke against public funding. We don't want our tax dollars to be used for attack ads and robocalls at dinner, for postcards, for mailers, and all of those other sorts of things. Those are important tools of the campaign process. We just don't think that the taxpayers should be the folks that are forced to foot the bill. Right now, Corruption in state government costs over $1,300 per person, whereas this would be limited to $9 per person. You wrote an op-ed about this for one of the local papers, and you called Initiated Measure 22 a nightmare. Initiated Measure 22 comes across as a nightmare to me, in part because of its length. With 34 pages and 70 different changes to law, it's it's a monstrosity to try and learn and digest. How much has been spent on the Defeat 22 side at this point? 
I don't have an exact total. We, we're spending hundreds of thousand dollars on our effort. You've stirred up a hornet's nest. You got to stir the pot and you got to whack the hornet's nest to drive change in this country. That's what makes America so beautiful. We can do this and not get thrown in prison. That's how you can make change when the political establishment and the status quo is refusing to do so. Some of these initiatives have a lot of appeal. So Wyland goes on the road and takes me along going town to town. But here in South Dakota. Telling voters that with democracy vouchers, they can spend their own tax dollars to back their favorite candidates. When's the last time you ever got this deal where you could actually take your money that you give to peer and spend it where you want to spend it? And if you want to spend it on someone you think is going to be out there supporting education and supporting you know, better health care, whatever your concerns and beliefs are, you get a chance to do that. News reports of serious corruption in state government angered many South Dakota voters, like Alan Brumer. They say that South Dakota uh, is the fifth most corrupt government in the country. Now, you know, I, I, there's one category we don't want to be up toward the top. Despite the odds against them, reformers rode a wave of anti-establishment anger and won a surprising 52% majority for the anti-corruption measure. The reformers had caught the Republican establishment off guard. Some folks got concerned and said, Mickelson, have you read this? I said, no, but I will. Mark Mickelson is speaker of the state legislature and South Dakota political royalty. Both his father and grandfather were governors. Initiated Measure 22 it is um, 13,000 words, 35 pages, amending South Dakota statute. There were some problems with it. But under South Dakota law, voters have the final say, or so everyone thought. Lawmakers, alarmed by reforms that would help challengers, turned against their own constituents. I've had private conversations with many of you that said, if we don't repeal this, I'm resigning. South Dakota voters did not fully understand what they were voting for. In an unprecedented move, the legislature called a state of emergency and by a party line majority, vetoed IM-22 and simply rejected the will of the people. But popular protests forced lawmakers to adopt some reforms, like limits on lobbyist donations and a government accountability panel, but not public funding of campaigns. The two sides clashed again in November 2018 with rival ballot initiatives. Neither side got all it wanted. The Republican speaker failed to block future citizen initiatives, but he made them harder to pass. Reformers fell short on their new initiative, but already they're gearing up for new reforms in 2020. It's the system that's the problem. It's not the people. It's this, we have to change the system. This legislature, with 85% of Republicans, want to make it more difficult to do that. That just is wrong, and we're going to fight it tooth and nail.